Thank you so much, Deputy Speaker, and I really appreciate the indulgence of the House to say a few words today on the committee report which has just been put before the Parliament by the Procedures Committee. The report is entitled Provisions for a More Family-Friendly Chamber, and this um, committee of really terrific and motivated members of Parliament has set out to explore some of the ways that we can make our Parliament uh, an environment where parents can feel uh, that they can combine their work and their family responsibilities in a, in a bit more of an effective manner. Um, one of the provisions uh, that's been recommended to be adopted by the parliament is that we allow breastfeeding to take place in the chamber. Um, I'm very supportive of this provision and I'm really glad that the committee's made that recommendation. I have to say, though, I don't think that's the part of the report that is uh, most important to me as a mum and as a member of parliament. Um, actually, the thing that I'm most um, pleased about and most excited about is the decision that the committee has uh, made, the recommended recommendation that's been made, um, that working parents in this building be allowed to take their infant children into the chamber when they need to do so. Um, Deputy Speaker, um, people who I've discussed this with in the past have sometimes come back to me and said, you know, this is ridiculous, this is a workplace, people are making critical decisions. Um, so I want to share a little bit about my experience of being a mum, having an infant and being a member of parliament in the hope that explaining it will, will um, shed some light on why this is so important for us. When I was elected to parliament, I had uh, a, a little baby. He was less than three months old uh, on the day that I was elected. And so from that point on, I basically went through this um, situation where we, we come to Canberra 20 weeks a year, and I was trying to breastfeed my young son and learn the new job of being a member of parliament. Um, one of the really crystallising experiences that I had was that um, I came to work one day and a division was called almost immediately and I was looking after my baby on my own that day. I didn't have a partner or my mum with me as sometimes um, I brought uh, someone to help me look after my child while I was working. Um, and almost the instant that I got into my office a division was called and um, my baby started to cry and he was really, really upset and he was probably I think five months old at the time. And it was a division, so I had to run down to the chamber and vote. And so I had to leave my baby there with a staff member who'd never had a child. And she looked, honestly, when I <laughs> handed the baby over, she looked like she was, you know, going to cry herself probably. Um, you know, she did a wonderful job. But um, anyone who's been a parent uh, knows that it's gut-wrenching to walk away from your own child at that early stage of their life. And that was something that, as members of parliament, we're called on to do relatively frequently. I can think of another situation where I was um, carrying my baby through the halls of parliament having just finished feeding and again a division was called and I'm sort of standing in the middle of parliament with a baby knowing that I need to be in the chamber in the next three or four minutes. Um, so it's just these um, difficulties that um, we've been facing uh, for a while here and Deputy Speaker I'm sure that no one would want uh, to create a situation where new mums who are trying to establish breastfeeding or new dads who are trying to um, develop that early bond with their child, have to sort of throw their child out to someone who's not really equipped to care for them. Um, I'm not the only person that's had experiences like this. Um, there are lots of members of parliament who have had to do the same sort of thing. Um, and I think it's just in the interests that this sort of situation be prevented. And so this part, um, this provision that will allow people to uh, take kids into the parliament when it's necessary is a really important one for me. Um, Deputy Speaker, I want to, to echo um, some of the words of the member for, for Ballarat in her contribution to this. Um, the reality is that all families are trying to uh, find ways to juggle work and childcare responsibilities. This is absolutely not something that members of parliament do uh, that's unique. Uh, and there are many aspects to our role as members of parliament that are really, really more consistent with parenting than, um, than other people who face you know, issues like casual work and not being able to plan childcare around those sorts of things. Of course, as members of parliament, we have more resources to manage our childcare responsibilities and our work, and we have a lot more flexibility than most people. Um, so none of this is to say that um, the, the difficulties that we face are worse than any other parents and families trying to manage these. Um, but we do face some specific uh, aspects of our role that make this difficult. We're away for 20 weeks a year. When Parliament's sitting, we're here you know, from somewhere around 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning until 9, 9.30 at night. Um, and of course, having a baby, having an infant, um, that makes things really, really hard sometimes. So um, it's something that all families are juggling, but something that I'm really, really pleased to see the Parliament taking um, some leadership on. 
And, Deputy Speaker, I think that is what we should strive for as a parliament. Um, we shouldn't be lagging on areas of combining work and family. We should be leading on that. And that's because, of all places, it is so crucial that we've got uh, family-friendly work environments in this parliament so that people who are of that age where they're having their first kids, and women in particular, um, can make a real contribution to the public life of this country. And I think, surely, that's something that's of interest to every Australian. Um, I would just make one final point, Deputy Speaker, that um, we face some huge issues with um, women's engagement generally in work in Australia. Um, I, I read a really interesting statistic recently that there are more um, men by the name of Andrew and David by a factor of five than there are women running uh, top 200 companies in this country. Um, and there is a 17 per cent gap between the wages of men and women that is growing over time, not diminishing. Um, and one of the critical things, one of the, the, the Pandora's box here, is trying to um, find ways that we can make both men and women um, get a balance between work and family during those um, periods of time where their kids are really young. And I'm just so pleased to see that the parliament is tackling this challenge head on. I want to thank the members of the Procedures Committee for what is a terrific report, and I really do hope that the parliament adopts the recommendations in it. Thank you. I thank the member for